Hokey dokey. In this problem, we are given a function, f of t, and they ask, what is an antiderivative of f of t? So, what we have to do is not take the derivative, but what's known as the antiderivative. So, in other words, we're trying to find the function, say, capital f of t, for which when we take the derivative of this, we get 1 over t to the 20th. So, how do we go about this? First, just as if we were taking the derivative of 1 over t to the 20th, we want to rewrite it so that the t is no longer in the denominator. So, what does that look like? With the help of negative exponents, this is equivalent to t to the negative 20th. So, now we want to find capital f of t. Again, this is the antiderivative. If we take the derivative of this, we should get this. So, how do we go about this? We want to do sort of the opposite of the power rule uh, that is used to find the derivative. So, if we were finding the derivative, we'd bring out the 20, the negative 20, subtract it by 1, and that would be the process. We sort of do that in reverse order in the opposite way. So, rather than... Um, subtracting one from the exponent at the end, we want to add one to the exponent at the beginning. So it'll be t to the negative 19th, and then instead of multiplying by negative 19 out in front, here's the point where we divide by negative 19. And so altogether, what we have is, here, let's rewrite it like this, we have t to the negative 19th over negative 19, and now, uh, so that's pretty much it, um, but they might rewrite it in this way. So they'd probably bring the negative from the bottom, just kind of out in front. t to the negative 19, they would likely rewrite as 1 over t to the positive 19. So a negative exponent on top translates to a positive exponent on the bottom. And then that 19 was also in the denominator. So that'll sort of just stay with that t term. So... Something like this is what we're looking for for our answer. So negative, that gets rid of a, b, and c. And of course, given these two options, when we break out the eraser, we see that e is our answer. All right, let's go ahead and do two more. One over x. So we would think the process for this one is the same, right? Let's rewrite it. If we have one over x to the first power, this is one over x to the negative one. So, a little bit faster now, antiderivative says we add a power, so negative 1 plus 1 puts us to 0, and then we divide by that same exponent, so 0, huh. So, x to the 0 over 0, that's some undefined thing, so maybe that's not the best path for this one. Can we think of a function for which, when we take its derivative, we get 1 over x? Especially, can we think of one of the options in here, like do we see any option in here that when we take the derivative of it, it'll give us 1 over x. And you might be leaning towards 1, hopefully, and that is option b. And it might look a little weird. You might wonder about the absolute value bars. That's kind of just a uh, formality thing. So anytime you take the antiderivative of 1 over x, it'll be natural log of x, but you'll want to make sure to put the absolute value bars around the x. It's kind of just like covering your bases in terms of domain uh, and things like that. So I won't go in too far in depth with it. But um, all right, let's go and do one more. Uh, again, so this is back to regular antiderivative power rule stuff. 1 over x is the only situation where this reverse power rule won't work out. So with this one, let's do a regular example. We, again, want to rewrite it with negative exponents, bringing that t term up. Now to find the antiderivative, we add one to the exponent to get negative 10, then we divide by that negative 10. Rewriting this, we bring the negative from the bottom out in front, we put t to the positive 10 on the bottom, leave a 10 out in front, and this is what we're looking for. That looks like option b, so let's break out the eraser to see that b is our answer. So again, rewrite the function as 
the variable raised to some exponent, <clears throat> excuse me, likely with the help of negative exponents, unless it's 1 over x. 1 over x goes to natural log of x, again, because the derivative of ln of x is 1 over x. And so this was a good little intro in antiderivatives using the reverse power rule. If you have any questions, let me know.